So we've got the the ICP sorted. We're thinking about who the, the people are within those types of businesses. We're understanding intent. I guess the next bit then is kind of moving on to messaging now. And, you know, without trying to set us up for a fail too much, we could probably do 10 podcasts on content and stuff like that. So we're not going to crack it in this question. But, um, you know, how should be people thinking about, if we're talking about scale and we're still talking about personalization then, what do you think people could be doing to make sure that message is still relevant then? Yeah, and this is this is a tricky one too, right? Because we all know what it looks like when it, it goes wrong. Yeah. You know, it's the the dear blank. You know, um, uh, you know the all caps industry. Um, so we have, I think, if we look back at the sort of um, a recipe you've just described. I mean, really, it's you've got the right company, you've got the right person, you know, it's the right time based on those mm-hmm. intent signals. So how do you get there with the right message and and I think the best place to look is there are clues in each of those three areas, the company, the person, and the timing that you can use, not just to, to craft your message, but even in your message. So talk about what those are. So on the company side, um, assuming you're working with um, some kind of um, company intelligence or, or company data provider, um, you, you should have 100 plus data points about that company that you know has visited your website. Um, and some of those are you know, kind of the usuals that you could use for, for uh, relevance or personalization, like what industry are they in? What size or stage company are they in? What's their location? But actually some of the more interesting ones we've found are things like um, what technologies they're using, right? So when, when, when we uh, reveal what companies are visiting uh, a customer's website, part of what we share is these are the technologies we can tell they're, they're using. And, and often it's, you know, 50 or 100 technologies. And so um, if, you're, if you're a solution that has something particularly interesting to say to a company that, say, uses Stripe to process their payments and uses HubSpot for their, for their marketing, um, you can tell that. Mm-hmm. And you can put that right in your message and say, hey, as a company that's using Stripe and HubSpot, you should be looking at this particular uh, best practice or solution, right? And that, that's... That's a huge advantage. So making sure you understand um, everything you can about the company so you can put that message in context. Then, of course, there's the person part, right? So what's their title? What's their role? What's their department? Those can be very useful ways to, to target the message. But the last one, I think, in some ways, this gets even more to the, the timeliness of it, is what can you tell about those first-party intent signals, right? So they came to your website you know what they did, right? So if you're if you're using a solution that shows you this company came to your website and saw each of these pages this many times over this time period, you can tell which blog article they read. You can tell what solution pages they were on. And so following up with content or a conversation that's relevant to that, perhaps combined with something you can tell about the technology they're using and the role they're in, now you've really got something, mm-hmm. right? Um, and uh, and those are the it's funny, you can kind of put these side by side, the sort of generic, you know, dear software company message and something that's really specific to them, their role and what they appear to be interested in. Super, super different. Yeah. And I guess you're thinking about people in particular buckets then, but obviously not too many buckets because then it's very, very hard to sort of do it at scale. But at the same time, if we're doing something at scale, we do have to try and put people in certain certain buckets just to make it a little bit easier to be able to do it at scale. Yeah, it's a great point. And I think, you know, to, to make it really explicit and sort of back to our one-to-one versus one-to-many, mm. I think there there's certainly a time where I'll go, I'll go completely the other way. So a, a completely different approach to this is, okay, salesperson, Let's make a list of all the companies with a list building tool. Now let's get a bunch of contacts for them. Okay, now let's start emailing them, right? And let's just <laughs> let's just email them all and see what happens, right? Or call back them in the nineteen eighties, <laughs> right? Well, and you know, and 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 I don't think a lot of people are doing just that today, mm-hmm. but I think a, a lot are still doing a version of that. Where then it's on the salesperson or the BDR to research each one. Okay, I guess I'm going to go to the website, and I'm going to go Crunchbase, I'm going to go LinkedIn, and see what mm-hmm. I can say, and. There's there's a role for that, but it's way more efficient and much more of a many to one kind of uh, motion to say, hey, here's who they are, why they're a fit, what technology they've got, what they read on your site. Here's everything. 
And maybe it's ready to start right away, or maybe you want to do a little bit more research, but far more efficient to mm -hmm. tee up a, 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 an SDR or a, a sales team like that. And that same relevance can also be used to power, say, targeted advertising campaigns, mm -hmm. right, or to power content campaigns. And so that's where you start to see these things working in concert to help start a conversation at the right time with the right company.